Okay, how are we doing out there? First things first, my name is Kenneth Bird. I'm the creator of Supreme Ambient Light Rejection Screen Paint using Ambient Light Rejection Technology Gain. I'm going to come in here and get this demonstration done for today. All right, so I told you about people do demonstrations showing off their screen versus a white screen, saying that there is a big difference, and there really isn't a big difference pretty much when I see a lot of these demonstrations. It really doesn't show a significant loss Maybe a, a little bit of a gain. You get a little bit of a gain from a uh, some of the gray screens I've seen versus white screen. Keep in mind, for those of you who want to challenge our gray technology, you've seen what that stuff can do. It's pretty quite remarkable on what the gray technology we developed can do. But that's not about the, what we're talking about. We're talking about using a 5000 Lumen Chrissy on a white projection screen versus our black technology. And to show you that, some of you churches and companies out there who are still using white screens you keep thinking that because you have a high power projector that you're going to be able to produce a amazing image off your white screen and i'm showing that even with a projector of this caliber of this kind of power that it is usually worth nothing without our technology so we call this the splatter screen this is a white official 2.0 projection screen i bought over at amazon See the borders on the back of it? It's a real legit screen. And it's not even splat it's splattered with our technology just throwing across the screen. Not even a, a good paint job. Just to show you exactly how much of a difference our technology can um, change to a screen that's all white. Now, usually people that are using all white screens, they will go with the highest lumen projector they can get their hands on. Because they feel that the brighter the projector, they're still going to be able to make hit contact with the screen from a long distance throw and still be able to pull an image. Our distance throw isn't that far. So 5,000 lumens ain't got far to travel before it nails that screen. And it's gonna hit it with quite a lot. So to show you, even with the projector sitting right up on top of the screen, you're still not gonna to be able to achieve your picture quality. Now I'm gonna show you how much of, of a significant loss you will lose by not using our technology. I'm gonna go back and start this. From the beginning. Now I told you when people do demonstrations like this, you have to show a how much your product is going to improve a white screen. If it's basically by under a light shade or maybe a slightly difference, then that's not proving what the technology can do. It has to be a huge change, a huge difference. As I told you, if I hit this white screen with 5,000 lumens compared to our technology, the white screen isn't going to be the pickup. And the only thing you see is our technology pulling up on that screen. So I'm going to let that run a bit right there. Got a few videos in here to switch over to. Phone back right here. Okay, here we go. And it just shows you now, people like they think that if you get a 5,000, 6,000, a high powered lumen projector, you are still going to have the ability to be able to pick up images off a white screen. And as I told you before, contrast is everything. That's why a lot of our screen paint products are dark. But when it comes to that gray, for those of you who want to challenge the gray, the gray pulls up insane and very good contrast levels for a, a, um, a dark gray screen. But here we are talking about the black technology. And I told you, the white screen isn't going to pick up anything. Even at 5,000 lumens hitting the screen. And if we get any political commercials, I'm going to turn my phone to the side just to let you know. When you get anything political, it's going to pop up. Try to keep this area neutral as much as possible. I want you to observe all of it. Look at the white screen. Now imagine if you had a business or... If you had a bar, whatever you may have, and you're using a white screen, you hit it with a 5,000 lumen projector, that's pretty much what you're going to get off your white screen. 
And this is not even a decent paint job. This is just me just splattering paint on the screen and just rolling across in any direction. Some reason we had a disconnection issue. I'll check it out, figure out what's going on. In about a minute, we get these from time to time. I don't know why we're having this problem. Okay, for some reason I just popped out of my uh my service. It's gonna be about a minute. We're in the basement, right? That's fantastic. And I lost all my feeds. Wow. All right, let me, I gotta disconnect for a minute. <sighs> the crap I go through in my day. So somehow we lost our connection. Let me see what's going on because Chromecast is over here. If the connection's gone, they will die just about anywhere. So let's power that up and see what's going on. If that thing is not triggering, that means basically the internet just went down at the worst time. If that thing is running, it's powering up right now. If that's running, that means that the Chromecast shut down on me, and that could be possibly too. The Chromecast might have shut down. I have to throw my lights on for that one. Oh no, we're back. All right, so that was weird. All right, let's see what goes on now. All right, that was a bit interesting. So somehow my Chromecast completely disconnected, came right back on, which is weird. It happens from time to time. So let's see if we can get anything to start in here. Let's see if we can be from here and go to another video. Sometimes the previous video may have some problems starting, so I have to go back into another video and then come back out and go back into that one. And that happens from time to time. I don't get it. I paid $217 a month for business class. Well, they shouldn't be having this problem, to tell you the truth. And this is what I was talking about. You know, you have a white screen, gray screen, whatever. Like I said, them light gray screens, white screens, they can't pick it up. Especially a white screen. A white screen is not picking up anything. I mean, nothing at all. And people, I see people going to get like projectors way powerful than the one I'm using right here. 6,000, 7,000 lumen projectors. And they really feel that the projector is going to be able to improve the picture quality on a white screen. And it's not. Because you have to have contrast in order to do that. And only if they have contrast, your contrast is going to have really high white levels in order to pick up the image bright enough so it doesn't come up too dark so you can't see this image at all. So it's a bit of a complicated kind of puzzle right there. Now, when I said, when you show a demonstration of a white screen versus your technology, you have to show a very high difference in both of them. All right? You can't just show a slightly... Uh, a faded red versus a slightly darker red. You know, you have to show a huge difference. I told you, if I hit this screen with a 5,000 lumen projector, what I'm about to get, I guarantee that the white screen's not even gonna pop up. Told you that, and there it is right there. I know my technology, I know how it's gonna react. So if you got a white screen, most of the time I go to like, I've seen sport bars and, you know, uh, like I said, churches and, businesses i was in where i was in one place they had a big white screen up there no it's a disney store the disney store in franklin mills had this huge white screen up there and i'm like what a shame like they're really not getting anything out of that projector beautiful projector probably like a three thousand dollar 4k projector we ain't getting anything out of it okay beats and giving them a business card and showing them a demonstration but i was it was my day off I don't work on my day off i'm not running around having fun uh, that was before covid people just to let you know 
Because some be like, I thought you said you don't go out. No, I don't go out. But that was before COVID when all that hit. And our projector is still sitting in its factory settings. That's why if that screen in there was white, you wouldn't be able to see it. Nope. And you see me test against the higher screens. Hold on for a minute. Let's pause right here for a minute. We're going to go back and grab a, stuff, a, a professional sample. If you hear air raid horns going off, it's not being big. They do it all the time down here. I don't know what it is. I'm going to practice it here. All right, so we're going to take the gray cell 5D. And we're going to put it right here, all right? Give it its own little spot by itself, right there. Let's see. We'll give this own little spot to itself on the side of the white screen. You notice it's not picking up any contrast. It's picking up color, but it's not picking up any contrast. That background is supposed to come up jet black. Here comes the fish. Is it a pass through? Pick up the core reef. We should get an info commercial here somewhere. They usually pop up in these. Yep. Interesting, isn't it? There you go. Told you, if I hit this thing with 5,000 lumen projector, white screen or gray screen, it's not going to pull up. And before people say, well, what about your technology? Our technology beat that screen. Yep, did the demonstration already. Five high performance screens versus our silver and gray technology, and we beat all five of them. In contrast, color patterns, and we're able to produce an image on a gray screen outside, outside, a gray screen outside on 1,000 lumens at 13 feet back watching Tron. So we've already proved what we can do when it comes to gray technology, rear projection technology. But as you as you can see, like I said, you're supposed to see a significant difference. Like I said, when somebody's showing a white shade of paper against and they're showing a slightly slightly darker, no, that's that's not the demo it's not how you do a demonstration. See the difference in that technology? I told you, gray screens, some of these gray screens are not that far off from white screens. It looks like somebody took a magic brush and just painted in an ocean. That's why that technology can pull an image in a fully lit environment because they're designed to basically reflect light. Now that screen right there, keep in mind, if we were to get a screen that was closest to the caliber of our screen, it would probably be around a Dark Star 9, but still you're talking about a $3,000 projection screen. That screen right there would cost you, if you were painting 120 inch, about $160. Now, 
And if you want to watch dark scenery, nice city, skyline, any form of movies involving heavy contrast, if you watch a movie and it basically is a night scene, you're not going to see it on a white screen. <coughs> Sorry about that. Some people say, what if I switch to 4K? That's not going to make a difference. You're still not going to be able to see it. And that's what I've been trying to say. I'm not bragging when I say this. What's best for sports? Well, <coughs> sorry about that. Eating Doritos, which I should not be doing in the middle of the day. <coughs> yeah, I'm checking on Doritos, people. Shouldn't be flashing the logo, but these are my bottles. These are my babies. Man, I love Doritos. I love them. But, um, best for sports, pretty much all of the screen paint works on sports. All of the screen paints work fantastic on sports. It depends on what you, what you, what you, it depends on what you like. If you're a contrast, I'm into contrast. I love contrast. So for me, I like to have that black screen. <clears throat> That kind of OLED look. So I, I favor black screens. Some people are more comfortable with a gray screen. So that's why we have that front and rear black silver that produces very high gain and amazing contrast levels. Next to a black screen, it's never going to compete against a black screen because it's black. Um, the nines, usually most people go through the nines basically. Most people who buy the nines are pretty gamers or people are doing visual effects because that screen pops off a lot of high colors. But if I'm doing, if I'm watching sports, I go near the black screens. I'm, except for me, that's because I like contrast. You know what I mean? Then we have the platinum eclipse. The platinum eclipse is a dark gray screen. It's so dark they can pass for black screens. Some people like them because they had the balance of white levels and black levels at the same time. So you lean toward that technology. So each one plays its own different part. But to ask me what's best for sports, I'm going to always say black because that's what I have throughout my entire house. I like black. I like that's the technology I choose. Out of all the ones I have, I like the black screens. I just like the fact that that contrast levels pull through and you can see it. Well, which one is the boat? I'm really happy about this projector. I am going to have to try to get me. I want to think about buying another one now. I'm going to buy me another one. But this one right here, I got another one coming in. It should be coming in probably tomorrow. I have a, um, I have a, um, I bought another LW uh, 400 um, Chrissy projector. Like I said, I mean, all any kind of screens, any kind of projectors work when it comes to our um, our screen paint. We've tested just about everything, but me, people ask me, what's my favorite projector? It's a Chrissy, hands down. I love these projectors. I was a big ViewSonic and the ViewSonic. I still like the ViewSonic because ViewSonic had that two thirty five point one. I bought four Chrissies. Well, actually, how many have I got? I got one, two. Got another one upstairs. Another one. That's four. Got one coming on the way, that's five, and this is six. I own six of them. Six of these projectors. And I still like the View Sign because View Science has 235.1. None of my Christie projectors have 235.1s. None of the Sony VPLs I own three of the Sony VPLs. None of them have any form of 235.1. And they're like four or five grand, five thousand dollar projectors. That was blessed to get for three hundred dollars. Right. If I was going to go 235.1, I would buy a Sonic in a heartbeat. Because I don't know what it would cost me to get a projector in this caliber in a 235.1. Probably quite pricey. Oh, and guess what? This projector has picture in picture. Which I just found out a few minutes ago. So, I'm going to have to run through my computer. Because I need another option there. See right here on the remote control? That is PIP. PIP. This has picture in picture capability. That is freaking <coughs> cool. Sony's at twin mode. The twin mode allows you to watch two TV, two screens side by side. Picture and picture is going to allow me to do that big screen and little picture in the middle. 
which is going to come in quite handy because now I'm thinking about running another console system through this one. Let me see. If yeah, because I can run my PS4 and PS5 through the same projector. Um, I would just have to get a um a, a breakout box because it's not too. It, oh no 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 no! I forgot about that. I get the converter. The converter will convert the BGA into HDMI. I can run my PS4 through one, and I'll run my X and run my um, uh, PS4 and PS5 through the other one. When I can get my hands on one. Uh, I found it's very hard to get now. You know, you'd think if somebody goes to this, or Xbox, these big companies go through this every freaking time they design a system, they always have a shortage. Every time they always have a shortage. You think about it. This has been going on forever. This came out when the Gen Gen I mean, you know, the Sega Master System, they had the same shortage. Same shortage when the, um, when, the, um, when the N64 came out. Same thing. This is, I think it's a strategy, man. Wait, what, wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. That, that's funny. Okay. I might have missed it. What it was the... You painted on border. I don't get what you mean by border. What you mean by border? I don't get that. I don't get what you mean by you gotta you gotta frame it. What's the size? I don't get what you mean by what's the board. What do you mean the border I painted on? Are you talking about the screen here? Which one? We got about five or six screens in this house. So I don't know which one you're talking about. You said border. Are you talking about the border here? This one over here with the border? That's 135. That's 135 screens. That's an elite screen coated with our technology, our black technology. This right here is a basic uh white projection screen I bought off Amazon and splattered our paint across it. I'm showing now right here. This is a built screen, man. This is a screen. Uh, it's probably about 80 inches. About an 80 inch screen. But the object of this is, is, is demonstration, the paint you see that splattered all over across it, that's our black technology. That's the same thing you're seeing in that next room pulling up on a 135 inch screen. That's our black technology. And right here, this is my uh, Christie 505 projector at 5,000 lumens. So it's to show that even with a projector of 5,000 lumens, you can't pull that image up on a white screen. That's the whole purpose of the demonstration. And instead of me using a white sheet of paper or a white sample, I got a physical uh, 2.0 white projection screen sold on Amazon. And to show you that even with 5,000 lumens sitting at a short distance, it doesn't make a difference. You can't pull the image. Now right there, that little sheet right there, that is an elite screen gray cinema 5D right there in the corner. We'll get a little close on it. Told you, not too much off on a white screen. So the white screen would have cost me on Amazon for a hundred inch twenty eight dollars. The gray set of a five D for a hundred inch would have cost you thirteen to fourteen hundred dollars. The black technology you're seeing right there, that's producing the beautiful image, would have cost you a hundred and sixty dollars to paint up to a hundred and twenty six inch screen. Interesting, isn't it? Yep, that's what I wanted to show you. All right. I'm going to skedaddle out of here because I'm going back up to the game room because I got some work to do up there today. I'm working on a few things. Can you post a link of what? Post a link. Let's see. Post a link. Oh, a link where you get the 120 inch screens? Actually, it's a company I'm dealing with right now. Who I got a really good screen from, and I didn't pay a lot of money for a map. I'm about to go in and buy me another one today. I need it for something. I need it for an acoustic stream. I'm not getting 100 inch, but I'm getting 120 inch. I'll put the link at the bottom of the company where I got the screen from. Now, keep in mind, that's an elite fixed frame screen right there. That cost me $264. If you got a chance to hear the nightmare I went through on buying one of their screens again, I don't buy them anymore because I had some problems with them. They're about returning, returning something when the screen was missing parts. So I got my money back from Amazon, but Elite Screen still failed to send me out a shipping label. So they said I can keep the screen. So eh, I'm going to do with it. Anyway, it's missing parts. That's 106 inch right there. That's an Elite Screen. I cost me $180 because it's edgeless. Because it's an edgeless screen. 
And then out there on the deck, that is another 126 inch on the deck. That's on elite screen. That is my uh, my kitchen projection screen with the border that matches the countertop. That's something I built. That's made out of cardboard. Cardboard and contact paper. And then I'll show you the screen that I got for a really good price. And I'm actually going to be buying from them again in a few minutes. I'm about to go purchase another screen from them today. The screen, the, the screen is very reasonable. There's the Elite screen. That freaking Elite will not give me a shipping label so I can send them back to the screen. I don't even want it. I don't want it. I just want it out of here. Please send me a shipping label so I can send it back to you because I don't want it. This is my custom built uh, 79 inch portrait screen. That's portrait. These are all the projectors I have. I told you, this is the projector they sent me that was broken. I had to get another one. These are all the projectors I have right now to play around with. Yeah, that just fell. So these are my Sony's right here, all my Sony's. I bought VPL FA30, VPL FA30, VPL FA36, Sony Ultra Short Throw. That's a 10,000 lumen projector, which I'm doing repairs on. This is another Chrissy right here that I have set up. All my vintage projectors at the bottom. There's a laser short throw projector right there at the bottom. And this one right here, I'm setting up for the acoustic screen. That's a Panasonic. And then I have uh, some other short throw projectors I have there I play around with. So in the gaming room, I'll show you the screen. And here, this is the gaming room I'm building right now. I'm setting up. This is one of the screens. This is an elite screen right here. It's 100 inch. But this giant screen over here it's a screen I paid $185 for. I put this together on, um, on Facebook Live. Very easy to put together, man. The screen cost me $185 for a 135 inch. Now, if you're gonna pay, you want a 100 inch, I think it'll cost you about $113. That's what it'll cost you, shipping is free. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the link of the company where I'm buying my screens from now, and you can go over there and you could buy from them and get your screen from over there. Now there's the other Chrissy right there. I'm doing all Chrissy's in here. So you can know all the Sony's are missing because now I'm gonna be putting Chrissy's in here. Oh, you want 120 inch? They got 120 inch in there. They have 100 inch, 120. Uh, I think they got 100, 135, which I bought. Then they got a two 155. I wanted the 155 so badly, but it wasn't gonna fit in here in the room. I'll finally be to finish this off today. If they bring in the stuff that I need, I can finish this screen off already. I started measuring the walls for my for my um, my shelves. So I'm gonna start placing my projectors up. I don't have to mount these up because these projectors have lens shift, which means I don't have to worry about tilting my projector. The screen will actually, I can bring it down and connect it to the screen with no problem. So I'll be back in here today and I gotta order more lead lights for the floor. So I need more lead lights for the floor once I'm done. But yeah, I'll put the link up so you can get it. And um, I check them out. It's a good site. Um, the uh, screens are very easy to put together. I put one together on um, on um, on um, on uh, YouTube Live, and um, like I said, very easy to put them together. And very affordable. Um, I put the link up because I'm about to go in and go and order me a 90 inch. I need the 90 inch because I'm making a black acoustic screen uh, for the next project. Because people have been asking me over and over again about making an acoustic screen, so we're going to make one. But keep in mind, we're not going to paint it with any of the screen paints. We're going to be using that black 12 invisible technology we're working on. That's what it's going to be coded for. Because you can't paint an acoustic screen with the paint we make. It's too thick. It'll block all the holes. It'll muffle the sound. And it'll sound horrible. It has to be used with a spray-on application. And the darkest thing we have right now is that 12. We make that black 12 invisible. That's what we're going to be using to spray it. Because I want that acoustic screen to look jet black. I want it so you don't see, um, I want the speakers and everything with the speakers put behind it. Oh, amazing. I can't tell you too much about it. Putting speakers behind it. And instead of it having that colorful LED light, it's going to have all dark black LED lighting behind the back of it. It is going to be sick. Trust me when I get done with it. Um, so I'm working on that. And that's why I got the Panasonic projector because I want the Panasonic projector because it's jet black. I want the whole entire set to be black. The speakers to be black. The screen to be black. The whole nine yards. It's just going to be sick when I get done with it. So that is going to be another project. As soon as I knock out the arcade screen, I get the rest of my stuff in the day, my supplies, I'll be in the mount of my projector, my projectors up. I'll be to finish my arcade screen 
and I'll be able to start working on uh, hanging the other screen, getting that wall painted behind, because I want because the small screen behind that has to be painted before I can hang the screen. And then I have to run the back and rest of the LED lights to the back of that screen, down the side of the screen, and across around the floor. Just tracing out the floor. So that has to be run. And then I have to go back in and I have to order my um, gaming recliner. I ordered a gaming recliner. It is nice. Massage, leans back. It's like a big lazy boy, but it's a gaming recliner. So I thought since I'm going to be in that chair for a while, gaming, might as well be comfortable. And it has to come with cup holders. So I'm going to put cup holders and everything. That's going to be pretty cool. All right. So, um, yeah, once we get that done, we'll get that all started. So let me get off here real quick. So you guys can get a hold of this link, and I'm going to put, take care of this right now. I know I usually say I'm going to put the link in. What happens? I said I'm going to put the link in. I feel tired. I want to sit down and relax in my little area over there, and I kind of forget. I doze off, and I forget. But this time, I'm going to put everything in there for you guys. And I'll also put the link in the shopping cart uh, where you can get the screen paint for $142 with free chasers. All right. With that being said, thank you all for your time. I appreciate you all coming in. You all have a blessed day. Be safe out there. You got to go.